Hi everyone and welcome to the second video of Matt's Plants. So at the end of the first video I mentioned that in addition to orchids, um, carnivorous plants and a few other weird and wonderful things, I also grow uh, African violets. And this was born out of uh, a family member in desperation at having to water my highland terrarium and spray my plants and do various other things. Um, shouting at me, could I not grow something normal? So I looked around and couldn't really find any house plants I liked. They were all too, far too boring for me, far too uninteresting, um, and didn't present too much of a challenge to grow. So, but in the end I came across um, some unusual sort of cultivars of African violets, which I thought looked absolutely fantastic. So I started off growing one or two, uh, and now I grow several. So in my Highland terrarium, I grow um, a large number of orchids of the Pleurothalid family. So Mastavalias, Restripias, uh, I also grow Nepenthes um, and sort of several other orchid species that are generally considered to be quite difficult to grow. And I've only ever managed to kill uh, two of my orchids in the Highland terrarium. Both were last summer and both were during the heat wave simply because I couldn't get the nighttime temperatures down low enough. To, to make a difference. Uh, and eventually one of the plants, a couple of the plants went brown and sort of keeled over. Um, but generally I've been quite lucky and I've done quite well at growing, uh, as I say, several, quite a few members of the Pleurothalid family. So African violets, on the other hand, I'm embarrassed to say I've killed more than my fair share. So while I've been talking, I've just been sort of waving the camera over some of the blooms I've currently got in flower. Um, which I think look absolutely great. They really do brighten up my, my home office, particularly at the moment when I'm stuck inside, um, you know, given the current state of the world. So I'm gonna do a couple of top tips on how not to kill African violets. I'm also going to talk very quickly about uh, the hydroponic wicking method I use to take leaf cuttings and start off new plants, because it's been very successful for me and hopefully it will be for other people. So, I think the most common mistake with African violets is the potting mix and the size of the pot. So generally the pot um, diameter needs to be about a third of the size of the span of the African violet leaves. So if the African violet leaves are 12 centimeters across, um, three or four centimeter pot, something like that should be more than adequate. So in terms of potting mix, I tend to keep it really, really simple. I use one third peat, one third perlite, and one third uh, for meticulite. A little bit less peat, a little bit more perlite, generally works quite well. Um, so as you can see, this is the potting mix. It's a very, very loose, very, very granular potting mix. And this does absolutely fine. I find um, African violets don't like having their roots too wet and they also don't like being compacted into soil. So when you pot a plant up, I find sort of, if you've got a cutting, um, obviously you're potting up, so put some media at the bottom of the pot, don't press it down, just give it a tap, put the plant in, and as you're sort of adding the extra media around the roots, just literally just spoon it in. Um, once it's in again, give the pot a little bit of a tap, but don't sort of push down the way you would with a uh, perhaps a garden plant or, or something like that. And I find that works really, really well. Small pot, very loose granular mix. Um, I water mine from the bottom um, about once a week in the winter, maybe about every five days, the height of summer. Stand them in the water, uh, wait about half an hour for the media to suck up the moisture, and uh, and that's it. I think the problem most people have with these is giving them far too much water. They'll usually let you know, uh, the leaves will kind of droop and look a bit sad, and at that point they really need to be watered. So stick them in the water from the bottom, half an hour, uh, let the soil absorb some moisture and you'll find about a couple of hours later the plants will perk right up and look like these leaves do, sort of nice and firm. Yeah, absolutely brilliant little plants. I'll probably feature these again as more come into bloom, but just for today, just a little bit of a quick introduction. So I mentioned that when starting plants off, um, you can take a leaf cutting, 
So your best bet is to try to find a leaf, sort of a healthy looking leaf, but not one of the oldest, not one of the um, outer leaves. Sort of maybe the second layer in, something like that. Try to break it off on the stem and sort of leave like a diagonal cut down. So you're exposing a little bit more surface area. Uh, it's quite a good way of getting extra plants. You trade with people online, ask nicely on Facebook groups, and people will usually give you some leaves. Uh, I certainly have I've sent some out just before everybody was quarantined. So the hydroponics me method is wicking. So essentially you have a reservoir of water, um, a wick, which sort of sucks the water up into the, into the media in the pot. Um, it's hydroponics, so it's a non-soil mixed media, and it just keeps it sort of softly wet um, so the leaf can develop roots and start to grow into a plant. So the way I do it, small pot, um, something like that. And I use this, which is um, cotton sash cord from a well-known internet auction site. Probably can't get this from China at the moment, but see what you can do. Uh, poke it through one of the holes at the bottom, coil it around um, sort of at the base of the pot, and then fill the pot with perlite. So it's completely inert media. Um, so all of the feeding will be done by adding fertilizer to the water. So then as a reservoir, if you're going for the full Instagram effect, I recommend nice little kiln jars that look fantastic for about three days. Um, but you can take some pretty pictures and upload them. Uh, if you're like me and you just want your plants to grow, I've used sauce jars. So if you can see, obviously the water at the bottom is green with algae and the, the formerly white wick inside is, has gone sort of black again with algae. So that's obviously because the water's got fertilizer in it and it's exposed to sunlight. You can put tape. Um, my early versions of this, I just put masking tape around the jar. Um, stops the light getting in, lowers uh, the amount of algae that can grow. So obviously the pot is, um, with the wick coming out the bottom, is sort of balanced on top of the pot. You add water and a low dose, very low dose, so maybe a quarter of the recommended amount of African violet fertilizer uh, to the bottom. Uh, the water gets sucked up by the cotton wick and sort of gradually wets the perlite. Um, stick a leaf cutting sort of a like decent, uh, decent distance down into the perlite and wait. Um, and after about a month, you'll sort of get a small plantlet like this form. Um, generally, I let them grow on quite a bit longer. And then once you're ready, if you want to pot on, it's simply a case of picking the pot up, turning it upside down, shaking the perlite out, and you usually have one or several um, sort of small rooted African violet plants that you can then pot on in the nice loose mix. Definitely don't press it down around the roots. Uh, and then water in the normal way. And uh, I've been very successful propagating my plants that way. So there you go, basic introduction to wicking hydroponics for African violets, a little bit of look at my African violets and my top tips on how not to kill them. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Hope everyone's staying safe and uh, I'll upload another video very soon.